Greetings, Wheat Brave Souls community. This is Casa Tool back again with an attack pattern clarification for the Grand Fisher Ultimate Difficulty Epic Raid walkthrough video I released yesterday. If you're looking for the complete Epic Raid walkthrough video, this isn't it. Go check my video archive. This video simply serves to correct something I said during that actual walkthrough video. And then they'll start detonating. And to be honest, I haven't completely figured this out. I just know the center one detonates at the same time as the first two. <laughs> Okay, but to be completely fair, that was true for that particular attack pattern variation that was highlighted in the video. However, there are multiple variations of this pattern, so um, it's not always guaranteed that that center area is going to be safe. So I'm here right now to set the record straight. Without further ado, take two. Attack phase two, attack pattern number three, and I call this one, brand new name, the nines. The reason for that are these nine circles right here. As you see, there is one central circle surrounded by eight uh, circles around the edge of the arena. So three of the circles will always be a death blow. The center circle, well, that's always a death blow. It never moves. Whereas on the outer edge, two of the circles on the opposite edges of the arena will also be death blows. And as you see here, they can uh, be in any position. Now, just to clarify, uh, the purple circles, they don't rearrange positions during the pattern. This is just for formal informative purposes, so you know the different variations of where things can be. Uh, we'll get into the actual patterns here. Um, how about right now? So these circles will come and go in groups of three. Each set of three will contain one purple circle and two red circles. And there are two broad categories of these circle groups. Let's call them type A and type B. Type A contains uh, one set here. That is the one that you see before you. So that has the center purple circle. And then there will be two red circles, each on the opposite ends of the arena. And the type B category contains all the circles around the edge. And um, as you see here, they're staggered. So you never have a group of three that uh, or two of the circles in a, in a single group are immediately adjacent to each other, with the exception of that type A, because obviously the center is adjacent to everything. So putting it all together, we have three possible variations here. So let's focus on that center death blow circle. That's what everyone catches their eye. That's what they're preoccupied with. So variant one is when that center purple circle appears in the first wave of three circles as they appear. Uh, variant two is when that center death blow circle appears in the third that's intentional, the third wave. And then variant number three is when it appears in the second wave. So the fun thing about these variations is you never do the same thing for any two of the variants. So in one of them, you will jump into the center area. Another one, you'll jump out of, the, out of the center area. And the last one, you'll actually jump laterally from an outer edge to another outer edge circle area. This will all make sense when I go into these things in detail. So as I said, variant one is when that center purple appears in the first wave of circles. And in this one, you will end up ultimately jumping into the center area. Let's take a look. So you'll just be standing around beating on Grand Fisher and boom, you see that purple. Oh my gosh, wait for the second spawn. Then look for the open area, jump into it. As soon as you see the first detonation, jump back into the center and resume your attack. Okay, and let's see how this looks in game. Waiting for that initial center circle. There it is. Look for the last appearing circle. Detonation. Jump in. Wow, hard to keep up. Let's see it again. Initial circle appears. Look for that last safe area. Then jump in as soon as you see that detonation. This is the most straightforward of the variants because I think everyone's natural tendency is to jump into that center area anyways. So in variant two, the center purple circle appears in the third wave. So in this case, you're just basically you're waiting for that center circle to appear. And then when you notice it's in the third wave, then you wait for the first set of circles to detonate and jump into them. Uh, it's also important to know which circles appeared first. So you're not kind of doing things at the last moment. OK, and let's see how this looks in game. Now we're waiting for the circles to appear. OK, nothing in the center, nothing in the center. OK, there it is. Now we're going to just dash out really easy. Let's see it again. Waiting for the circles to appear. We see them now. Uh, we see the second set. They're not in the center, so we're just kind of calculating and angling where that first set appeared so we can quickly jump out without getting uh, clipped by that death blow. And that brings us to variant number three, where the center purple circle appears in the second wave. I personally find this one the most tricky. Uh, let's dive right in. 
And like other variants, what you're doing is you're observing to see which wave that center circle appears in. And when it appears in the second one, it's kind of like, oh, bummer. Now i got to do the side hop thing. Uh, technically, it is possible to jump into that center circle. Uh, but the timing is so tight, I almost always get clipped by the death blow whenever I make that attempt. So I highly recommend doing the lateral hop instead. Let's take a look in game. And I must apologize, I don't actually have a video of me pulling this off successfully, but here in this video, it's close enough to get the idea. So, uh, wow, that went by quick. Let's look at it again here. So we're waiting for those circles to appear. First set appearing, second set is in the center. Just not quite positioned right. Make that lateral jump and barely get clipped. If I would have been over just like one or two steps, I would have made it. So hopefully you get the idea. And that concludes this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks again for stopping by, and I will see you all in-game.